All right, thank you. So, okay. All right, so yeah, my name is DG, anyway, DG Manuel. So I'm an MVP with Microsoft. So, and most of people know me anyway. So, and I will skip the introduction. If you don't know me, you can Google for my name or go on LinkedIn to see who's talking. I'm a subject matter in anything Microsoft, right? So uh, technically I work for Microsoft as, a, as an MVP anyway. So, and um, yes, I'm happy to kind of give this brief introduction. It's going to be in two forms anyway, but I'm going to ensure that by the time you leave this program on the first phase, at least you know about Microsoft Dynamics. And also in the second phase, you can actually um, say, oh, you know, uh, you work with it before anyway. So that is my target on in this particular training. So yeah, I'll be talking about what is Microsoft actually on Dynamics. Okay, how it's kind of originated. So you're going to see some histories because yeah, I've worked with Dynamics. I think the first time I worked with Dynamics was 2013, right? So that's uh, almost 11 years now with this experience on different projects. And I've seen it evolve in different ways anyway. So you're going to see that um, journey. I think sometimes it's good to know how the application that you are working has really, really evolved. So I'm going to be talking about that. During the course of this training as well, I'll be mentioning how this project, um, this application related to the roles that you want to do because this is a specialized um, program or a specialized application, right? But it's really going to help in your role if you know this particular tool, right? So, and there are a lot of jobs there that are dynamic, um, Microsoft Dynamic 365 driven. So you would be able to pick those role if you know the tool. So that is going to be the objective. Then also, yeah, I'll, I'll also talk about the salary as well, even. So for instance, if a BA, right, is getting 50,000, right? So for you to know on uh, dynamics, right, I think you would add another 20% on top of that, yeah, because not every BA knows, knows, knows dynamics. Uh, the same thing with, with keywords as well. If you get a keyword role, you might get, let's say you get you know, 40,000 or something like that. So with dynamics, you you would get a, a little more from that. That's the purpose of, of this training. And I'll give some time later for questions and answers. So the question is, what is really Microsoft Dynamics 365? Right? So when you mention Microsoft 365, um, yeah, it's actually as businesses, um, whether startup or big companies or small companies, based, uh, it helps them with, with their process, right? and also for them to gain insight into the operation. And this is why it's very, very important for the, uh, as you can see now, in this one, you can see the BA role there because as a BA, you are all about process, right? So if this you know, tool is being used to manage process or to identify the process, yeah. So BA, you want to jump on it, right? And if they're using it to get insight, of course, then DA, you want to know how they use it. You want to be able to do that. So, and also is for them to kind of manage relationship with customers. So in this time now, so you will see the, you know, the role of ADM project managers and also Scrum Master coming out from that because they used to manage relationship with customer, even within the, part, the company as well. Some, uh, you can also use it to kind of manage sales, right? Uh, marketing campaigns, tracking interactions, and many more to be honest. So basically it's kind of a uh, suite of different applications that they brought together for them to be able to optimize their operation, right? So that is in a nutshell what Dynamics is. Now to bring it together into what then, for Microsoft, what they say it is actually they said is an a portfolio of intelligent business application, which means that it is not only one application, there are suites of portfolios of applications that you can see. So we're going to look at all these applications during the course of this of this particular program. And then what is the purpose of this 
application is to enable customers' experience actually, so that the company become more agile and in process in that process they reduce complexity and also um they do not need to increase their cost right uh, while they are doing that. So dynamics or Microsoft Dynamics three sixty five helps them to be able to be more agile and also for them to be cost efficient within the operation of any company that uses Microsoft Dynamics. So, and that is why it is really, really growing. It's it, It's been there for many years anyway. So within Microsoft Dynamics, I've kind of divided this into two sections anyway. So you can see there is customer engagement. Uh, this one, maybe you are already in Dynamics. You will hear people call it, say CE, CE, CE. When they say CE, they are actually talking about Microsoft uh, uh, customer engagement. Within customer engagement, you see dynamic six says customer service, you see field service, customer insight. Everything is wrapped together in what Microsoft called customer engagement or in short, CE. And also, you will also see FNO, which is finance and operation, right? So within that, you see different applications. You see Dynamic 365 Finance, Dynamic 365 Commerce, and Supply Chain, and Human Resources. Now, as I'm saying this, I know some people will now be looking at the oh, uh, Most of us would have something related to this field, right? Whether you work in sales before, or you work in bank or finance before, or you actually uh, are involved with data or supply chain, or maybe HR or human resources, so this is what Dynamics 365 is all about. It actually helps every company that uses it to be able to manage uh, their operation using this part, all these applications. So now bringing it together in another way, right? So if you look at the, like I said, that Dynamics 365 have different applications, but you can as well call it modules, right? So within that you have, you know, the right, right hand, which is for me, I think this one, the right hand is the most used one because there are low level ones. Like everybody, every company will have sales. Every company will do marketing, right? Every company will have customer service. Yeah. So you have this. So, and you have different suits for this. You have sales suits, marketing, fee service, and customer service, and uh, business central. So in most cases, they, the modules are interrelated, right? So they are actually kind of interwoven together. So even though uh, you might start with sales, then if you also do marketing, then after that, maybe customer service, then after sales and marketing, you get clients, then it moves to the second part, which is the operation part as well. So you would then make your project to be automated so that you have the workflow for your project. You may be to move from one stage to the other. And then also you kind of look into the finance and operation. Of then supply chain of your business as well, then commerce and HR. So those are the things that Microsoft actually brought together and they then make it into Dynamic 365. But you can actually uh, tear them apart and take one after the other. So it's basically you know building block. You can choose which one you want. Uh, and one thing I want to tell you, not all the companies that you work for will use all these tools, right? So they can yeah buy one, leave the other. But one thing I can say based on my experience, most people will have sales because <laughs> the major thing that uh, um, companies are set up is for them to sell products or services, right? Because of that, you will see you know, sales actually, which I think is the most popular one. Then marketing is another one. So maybe customer service is another one as well. Then finance and operation is another one that's common. Then after that, maybe it's you know, human resources that's also common. But to be honest, if you already understand how everything fits together, you understand the entities, you understand the terminology of one of them, you can now transfer it to the other anyway. So that's one thing I can I can say. But we're going to go through this in the in the course of this program. And like I said, I will also mention issues uh, about this. So how it started. For me, I kind of jump in at this stage, actually, right? So 2013, when Dynamics was not 
365 as we call it we call it crm 2013 at that particular time so and yeah before then 2001 is when they started uh, they acquired a company called i communicate microsoft acquired that company and then they decided to develop crm as they go along so it was not what we have right now we call dynamic 365 it was basically crm so crm uh, like i said before here all right that the says is the most important part is the core part of CR of the dynamic specifier. And at that point, it's basically that, right? It's CRM and everything so that you can manage your operations. So of course, it bring um, there's also marketing with it and also they can see customer service. But yeah, those are the core parts of dynamic. So it moved on until yeah, they acquired another company, feed one and then on and on like that before you now actually see dynamic 365 launched actually so and you can see it now you have dynamics at this point right now so before you go and after that you now they now change it to dynamic 365 so as as we know it right now so yeah so this is the journey or the history of Dynamics 365 from what we normally call CRM before until it's now Dynamics 365. Yeah. So as as you go along anyway. So yeah. So if you do have any question at all, please put it in the chat. So I'll be looking at it as I go along so that I can answer the questions as we go. So if you have any question at all or anything that you want me to clarify, I'm actually looking at the chart. So uh, yeah, but having said that, there will be um there will be time that you can also ask questions on mute and everything anyway. So okay. All right. So now the yeah, this is another analogy actually. So as you can see how dynamics has evolved and also different applications within FNO, right? This is basically FNO, right? So in you know, I said, yeah, so this is kind of divided into two parts, right? So this part is what we are now talking about, how this one has really, really evolved. So even in 2013, when I actually started with working with Dynamics, you, so Dynamic FNO that we have right now was not called FNO, it was called Dynamic AS actually so uh, but it's basically used by finance so if you are also here you are in finance or this is could be another thing for you to look into i work in a project to be honest it was really really interesting and also challenging for me because i'm not from uh, finance background i'm from it background but that project i have to work on fno and at the point i have to be reading about uh different accounting terminologies right so ledger even though it might so seems little or uh, uh, easy for some people but for me even the concept of ledger uh it's it's something that i yeah it, it's, it's 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 not it's not in it anyway so and receivable i can't receivable i can't payable so if these things are really making sense to you right if for accounting then i think you should look into getting some role in fno because for you it would be kind of easy in the path because you already know you have you have the background in finance okay and you can be able to kind of leverage on that so anyway the only thing that you just need to know is how dynamic works, how everything moves together. But then after that, the audit terminology, you can you can fit in anything anyway. So whether you are a uh, a QA, BA, DA, so yeah, you have a space, right? And okay, um someone is asking, is it like Salesforce? Yeah, it's similar to Salesforce. I'm actually coming to that. Thank you for asking that question. That in the family of ERP, actually. So I will tell you and you'll be able to actually see how they relate together and who are the competitors for dynamics. Thank you for, for that question anyway. Yeah. So, okay. So now, so you can see how this has actually grown as well. So like I said, CRM was the first one and it moved on. And then it kind of in 2016 slash 2017, it kind of matched together and with uh, dynamic AS and also 
project Mandora and they became like, oh, you no, know, actually, you know, CRM and AX, they become Dynamics 365, right? So, and then it, it, con it continues like that. But there are other parts of Dynamics that for me, which is, uh, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say it's not important uh, because a lot of people use it anyway. Dynamic GP, Dynamic SSL, and now, yeah, for different purposes anyway. But who knows, maybe as they go into 2000 and mm, maybe 30, they might then bring everything together into one big suite, okay? So now, yeah, let's try to break this thing apart, which is what we're going to do now. So dynamic customers engagement that I said before, which is people will call it CE, CE, right? So and in that you have the marketing, you have the sales, and also I've also mentioned the services, right? So and within the finance, yeah. So you would be talking about receivable, payable, budgeting, cost, uh, accounting, cost. At, at this time, I think the project manager should also be seeing themselves here yeah, as well, because you can see even with that, there's also project management, there's budgeting, there's cost accounting. So it's really, really important even for some companies. So that project managers also will get involved as well. So, and also even the DAs also will get involved. And also, yeah, maybe the QA would think I've left them to be honest. Everything will be configured, will be developed, and you have to test them anyway within that application. So no one is left out in this particular role. So whether you are project manager, you can actually apply for a project manager within dynamic space anyway, like I said, if a standard project manager is getting a particular salary for you within the dynamic space, I think you should you will add another twenty percent to the salary or to the rate anyway because you know dynamics anyway. So that's how the market is anyway. Yeah. Okay. So this is the dynamic suit anyway. Different applications you see finance, sales, uh, marketing. You see the field services, power apps, and, but even right now also there's co-pilot within it as well, which is the AI part. So I'm going to show you in the course of this um, presentation anyway, if it's not today or even next time that we meet anyway, I'll show you. So everything is kind of wrapped together in this. So, and um, yeah, so, okay. All right, cool. Let's go ahead. So, and now, quickly, right, just to have a deep dive into sales part of dynamics, all right, so that at least even if you leave this particular session today and dynamics is not like something that you've not heard, you know what how is done. So I will quickly want to go into sales to show you the process flow, what you need to go through for you to be able to work within this particular sales. So most of us will have received a call from an agency or receive a call from, uh, let's say, a company trying to sell an item to us, or you get an email or you subscribe to an email, they send an, uh, yeah, they will send an email to you, you click, okay, I want to subscribe. At that point, right, you are a lead, right? So technically they've identified you as a lead, right? So then there will be uh, maybe the sales rep will look at you and say, oh, this person qualify as a lead or this person does not qualify as a lead. So and having identified you as a lead, they will look at it. Do you did you actually meet the profile of the people they are looking for? Right. So and maybe on, based on demography, based on status, based on different thing anyway. So they will look at, at, at that. They will say, okay, yeah, this person qualify. If you qualify, then you you enter that particular workflow. If you did not qualify, that will be end of that particular workflow anyway. So let's assume that that particular person qualifies to be a lead. So a good example is, uh, let me take. MNS, right, right. MNS has kind of decided to say we want to have a new cloth line, right? And we are looking for people that would uh, buy this particular cloth, right? So let's assume that the cloth is for female, right? So, and if they send newsletter to you or they did an advert, you click on it. So at that point, you are an advanced elite. 
So let's say the clothes, the clothes line is for female. You happen to be a male. Apparently, you are disqualified from the lead. They don't need to waste their time following up with it. Let's say you are a, a, a male or a female, rather. You might also be qualified or disqualified. Let's say the, you are also based on the size. Maybe they know, okay, this particular uh, cloth is size 10 to 16. Then, and if you are not in that area, or let's say the cloth is even for, uh, um, let's say, babies or something like that. So you would not be qualified if you are an, an adult. Anyway, hopefully that is clear. Anyway, so you would then be qualified. So I haven't qualified. The company will have, will have seen an opportunity there, right? To say, okay, uh, this is an opportunity for us that we can actually pursue, right? For us to be able to sell our clothes to this particular company. And also you could be an individual, you could be a company, you could be like a reseller, a, you could, yeah, you could be different people, right? So that's why at that particular time, they will identify you, right? Is you, are you, do, do you have an account with us or do you, is, are you just a normal contact? And they will kind of create that. So, and having said that, if you for continue to specify that you are still interested, of course, they will create a code, code is accepted, or after a code is accepted, you have an order, right? They will send an order to you and everything, order is fulfilled and invoices. So most of the companies that you see online will use dynamic at the back, right? So most of these particular websites that you go to, right, you want to buy, even I'm even surprised, even Amazon, for instance, also will have that as well. So they use it to cover all these transactions that you're going to see if you have to, Kind of create an account yeah dynamic will do that uh, or you want to generate a code for you to be because before you can say oh you're adding things to basket and everything the code is generated for you and when you say okay continue to buy and then oh, your code is being accepted they create a receipt for you which is an order and they send an invoice to you basically and then they ship your order so most of the e-commerce website would have dynamics at the back at the back end doing that. You might not see it at the front end, you will see it at the back end anyway. So that's one thing I need to clarify. So this is just kind of a workflow to look at, okay, I'm a prospect and now I've got, I become a lead or uh, I become an opportunity. From a lead, you can also become an opportunity and uh, you become a customer. So this is kind of going through the same journey with you. So one thing I want to also tell you about is basic entities in Dynamic 365. We call it COLAC. Within Dynamic 365, you have contact, you have opportunity, you have lead, you have cases anyway. So those are the things that we are going to be looking at in great detail within the course. So what is a contact? What's an opportunity? What's a lead? What's an account? What's the cases? And how do we create them? Do you get it now? And what is your role from as a keyway when they say, okay, can you create a lead? What are you looking for? Right. Or what are you testing as a BA? Right. If you have to kind of create a requirement for a contact or opportunity, what are the process that you need to put in place? What are the things that you need to? How does the screen look like? What are the things that they want? They might want to change. That those are the things I'll be talking about from that point of view. And also, even if you're a DA, what are the insights that you can generate from dynamic point of view? So, and those are the things. So, how is it? How do companies use those insight to be able to make their their operation uh, cost efficient in, in 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 the process? So those are the things that we are going to be looking into. So we're going to take the uh, six uh, sales uh, module for an instance, and then go through this basic entity. This is an example of what you see in dynamics anyway. So like I said, right, so you will see something like this. So in all this one are different entities. So I, I didn't expand that, but later we're going to see what they are. So you can, it's kind of a busy website. It's actually a website, but it's a website that does a lot of things. So it's got a lot of things in there. So you need to know what all those moving parts of this application. So for instance, what are these? 
what you know as from let's say be a point of view if you have to write a requirement about workplace what are the things that you should put in there what is your uh, if you want to create a balsamic uh, uh, and also workflow using Visio, what are you going to do, right? Your wireframe, how does it look like? Even from testing point of view, what the workflow, how do you test it? Or if you want to move, like I mentioned before now, I said, okay, you can move from qualify to develop to propose and close for a lead actually. So when a lead is qualified, what does it become? How does it go from one state to the other? Those are the things that I would be looking into. And also, yeah, you can also you see have or you have ability to chat with your team members. And also there's copilot. There's AI functionality within dynamics, actually. So you even as a, a tester, you want to test, or you also want to know how to automate AI, how to test AI functionality. So you also have AI part of with that as well. So the same thing also for BA, you've not worked in AI uh, framework before, you want to get exposed to AI. You also have Copilot, which is Microsoft Copilot, which is their AI um, uh, application. So you have exposure to that as well anyway so you can also write a requirement for for that anyway so those are the things that you will see in the course of this presentation like i said okay who are this um program for basically so scrum masters project managers or adm business analysts um software testers and data analysts and functional consultant anyway but my focus will be mainly on the scrum master project manager adm business analyst uh, software testers and DA, right? But leaving the functional and uh, consultant a bit later. Anyway, so yeah, so I'll be talking about how this tool is used. And if you happen, if you happen to be on the project, so as as God Dynamic 365, how can you survive within that particular role? So that is what I'm going to talk about. I'll, I'll put this so for those guys that look at this as a blast screen you don't need to worry so within dynamics there's another tool which is i think is brilliant that microsoft already created so even though it's used by testers it's got 308 scenarios that you can actually go through right basically if you don't know dynamics and we're going to talk about this so but don't worry so if you don't know dynamics you want to learn how to go through dynamics so you can see for instance now here it's a create contact. How do you create contact? Even if by going through this particular test, you it will show you how you can create contact. And you can see, create an account, that's a test. But even if you run it, it's going to quickly create contact for you. Uh, for everybody, I think this is one thing I really, even if you're already working within a company, you want to know how this is done. I'm talking about 308 scenarios, right? On what you want to do, like how do you close opportunity? How do you assign account? How do you create a test account? How do you open a record? All those things are, are inside that. So I just put a screenshot of, of this one so that you can look at what we're going to kind of look into. So I think someone also mentioned that is dynamic related to Salesforce, okay, which I'm going to talk in in a moment quickly. All right, one minute. Apologies for that. So yeah, okay. So I'm going to talk about the CRM part and also the ERP. So like I said, Dynamics is kind of an ERP application. So for those guys, that have, what is actually ERP is Enterprise Resource Planning, right? So there are a lot of ERP applications over there that you can also use basically. So this is a list of different companies, but of course there are a lot. But this is just like big brands that are using Dynamic 365 
but then there are a lot of people actually. So this is just a the case study of different big guys anyway, but there are millions of companies that are using Dynamics 365. So now, yeah, like I said, so someone says Salesforce, is this similar to Salesforce? Yes. Salesforce is also an ERP, right? So and so you can see this is basically shares of ERP applications in there. So and you can see even Salesforce is not even on yes, the SAP as well, anyway. So but as you can see in that era, so you have Sage and Dynamics and which is bigger share anyway. So, and you have SAP as well, uh, Open Air, all those ones, Oracle, Oracle Finance, Oracle uh, Fusions and, and the likes anyway. So yeah, so this is this is the market share by percentage uh, right now. Dynamics is one of the leading one, anyway, if not the leading anyway, based on this particular uh, data. So for roles in dynamics, this is basically looking at uh, dynamics business analysis anyway. So you can see, so what you can get by having dynamics uh, roles anyway. So you have different roles that is related, related to dynamics anyway. So, and that is one. And also for, this is basically for a consultant anyway. So, yeah. So, and then also, yeah, you have other roles as dynamic customer engagement tester like that as well. So, yeah. So now, yeah, this course is not going to be free, but for one thing I want to do, yeah, I will try to cover everything that you need to know in basics or from today and next week when we meet. So even if you are not going to go for, forward, dynamics will not be new to you anyway. So it's going to be a free session today and tomorrow at least today now you kind of get um, what dynamics is about you know what the module is what is so we're going to look at this um, tomorrow or um, next week other so we're going to talk about that anyway but like i said this is going to go with 10 lessons anyway so and then you have opportunity to work on dynamics and everything anyway so then i'll also expose you to that particular tool i showed right now that's got three uh, 308 you know, test scenarios that you can actually put it and you can look at it. You might not even need to run it. I'll show you how you can actually go through and look at, okay, this is what I need to do for me to be able to create this particular entity so that you are not uh, afraid to use dynamics anyway. So that's one. But so, yeah, if you want after next week right you you can apply i think you can even apply now but after next week you'll not be able to join the other part of the session but you can see join next week anyway to see how we are going to move on at least that would really be helpful for you if you don't want to go even into the payment part of that but for you to go to go through this course after next week you have to pay 150 right uh it's kind of very cheap and way to be honest so it's just for us to kind of get people's um what's it called um commitment i would say so if you want to get that you should just go to this particular link or, and and then you would see that anyway so okay so that is where i'm going to stop then i would ask if you got any question okay any question Hi, good so, evening, DG. Thank you so much for running through that. Uh, my question is, um, if we decide to get on board, how long is the course going to run for? How many weeks? It's 10 weeks. 10 weeks, I know. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. All right, sir. So, okay, any other question? Okay, Mr. Deji, this time, Lola, thank you very much for the insightful exposition on uh, Dynamic 360. Actually, before I eventually started the QA training, is something I would have go for for QA, actually. So when you mentioned it, I was eager to join. 
and also um how do you because i know from a little research how do you become actually is it possible for you to know all the aspects of it i mean what i mean is that's that's what you call dynamic electricity manager like a project manager person is this course also is able to cover that for example you are able to assign manage the whole process of different departments and stuff like that i hope you understand my question uh, I, I don't think i do right because over many years i've worked on dynamics i've not seen any role like um, uh, marcus uh, dynamic project manager unless you're talking about project manager within dynamics not as a role right so within yeah unless you're talking about functional consultant right so for a functional consultant those are the ones that are kind of like a developer ish right so those are the ones that configure dynamics so that you can be able to kind of use them right so that's what it is but like i said my focus will be will not be on those right my focus will be on role specific right for those keyway BA, DA, and also project managers that want to work within dynamics. So that is what I want to focus on anyway. So yeah, for it's, by all means, yeah, if you are interested, yeah, you can put in for that. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't get that project manager. I've never seen that anyway. So yeah, but if you're talking about those ones that configures dynamics, yeah, so they are called. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You got it. Okay. They are, they are, yeah, they're actually called functional consultants anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. So, those are the ones that are kind of. But, however, yeah. So, they are basically like a developer of um, dynamics anyway. Yeah. They are, they, are, they are not called developer because dynamics itself, it, it's just configuration because they've already been developed. Right. So what you just need to do is to kind of set this one, yeah. And everyone can do that, but that is not going to be the focus in this particular training, yeah. Okay, all right, um, Miracle. Yeah, uh, good day, Mr. Deji. Uh, uh, I'm looking at the thing, the category is for advanced, I think advanced training. So we are still in the system as a project manager in term, or scrum master in term is it, will, can we will be able, can we be able to capture everything? Oh, okay, so uh, that <laughs> in that aspect, you need to yeah. Uh, I won't actually recommend anything to be honest for you, right? Uh, it's not yeah. So you need to look at uh, if you are able to cope with what you are doing right now with this, right? This training is going to happen every Sunday at this time for uh, 10 weeks, right? So as long as you can cope, you can combine them together, then that is fine. But if you couldn't combine them together, then yeah, so I would advise that, yeah, maybe you should consider a different thing, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, Damila, you, you have another question? Yes, don't mind me. So That's now, okay. as a keyword now, how do I come in or maybe after having done this training and uh, hopefully I guess lay an on experience on these, how, what kind of job am I applying for? What kind of, what kind of focus am I looking looking at in okay. taking for job? All right, so you are still going to look for dynamics role, right? So for, for instance, in the job that I displayed there, right? So it's still going to be tester or Kiwi, right? As you can see now, this one is Dynamic 365 Customer Engagement Tester, right? As you can see, it's looking for Customer Engagement Tester, right? But which means that if you don't have Dynamic 365, you won't be able to apply for this. So it's basically, no, no, they won't take you, right? So that is basically it. So there will be this one where you won't be able to. And oh, another thing also is like, I've mentioned other ERP, right? Sometimes there's transferable skills. So the fact that you know dynamics, you can, and there's Oracle role or Sage role, you can say, oh, I don't know Sage, but yeah, I've worked with dynamics before and I can transfer because there are 
they are all based on the same ERP um, module, right? So you can actually do that. So what you are going to apply for will still be tester. But of course, that means you, you can expand your horizon, right, to apply for roles that are also dynamic specific, which other people may not be able to uh, apply for technically because it's a specialized key on its own, right? It means that you have less people that uh, you will be applying for that role, right? And you have more chances of you getting the role. The same thing applies to the BA or Scrum Master as well. So if the role is for dynamics, actually, because not a lot of people have that experience, right? Or can go and talk about that. So some people will just see that role and just keep it. I don't have it and that will be it. So if you already have it, then you have more opportunity of applying. So that what I can I can say. So I think, yeah. Also from here right now, as a tester, you then will know how to test this application. You know what to look for, you know the terminology, and you can you can work with that. Yeah. Okay. All right, Davis, please. All right, thank you, DG. Um, I just want to ask if uh, some of us are unable to, to join in this uh, set of the training, when next is this happening again? And how often is it going to happen? Okay, that is a good question. That's a good question. Uh, we, we've done a training like this before. If I can remember, it was almost two years ago, right? So it's not something that we normally do often. But having said that, never say never, right? So I might get motivated and do it next time, but I can't promise anything for now anyway. So, but we've done it before. But for it then also, yeah, even then it was not, it was not me that did it actually, it was another person. But this time around, I just thought I can take it myself anyway. So, and because I've got free time, initially we don't normally, we normally have Saturday and Friday and Sunday uh, as part of the internship, but this is free now, so I can I can pick this up on this on a Sunday. So, but I can't promise you that yeah, this will happen again. But it might happen anyway. So that's what I can say. So how about if uh, a group of people are able to organize themselves after now and call on you to organize the training? Is that possible? Well, like I said, never say never, right? <laughs> what I know, right? <laughs> but it's it's now, right? So I cannot say okay, it's gonna to happen tomorrow. So however, uh, maybe I should let you know there are a lot of things that is changing in Blue Sky anyway. Lots of things is changing. There's going to be a new program uh, where if you're able to slot it, this one in, it would not be this amount again. Do you get it now? It will be. We might also do the same thing like what we normally do, 600 for the program. This is just basically me taking this one and say, yeah. So even if you have to do it later, right, I'm just telling you that would, this was going to happen, it would then increase in price. It wouldn't be the amount, if that's okay. Okay, no worries. All right, thank you. Uh, IoT. Good evening. Uh, yeah, yeah. So my inquiry is that I don't think you need a certification for the certification for this three sixty five, or do you? Say okay. you are a project manager, and um, you want to do this training. It's more of um enhanced knowledge. Okay, or... all right. That, that's a good question, right? So of course, yes, it's an enhanced knowledge. You need to have if not even knowledge. I would say is basically enhanced experience, rather, mm -hmm. right, for you to get that. But however, there is certification that you could do later anyway, if you want to go into that. So there is a certification for dynamics as well, but it's not that kind of important, right? So that's one thing I can say. Yeah, the experience is more important than certification. But of course, if you have the experience and you have the certification, it's 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 all joy anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So will we like um have a project? So how is this going to go? Is it just okay. going to be training or you would have assignments, you have projects to so that you can defend in interviews or okay. Uh that is a good question as well. Anyway, so there will be projects, right? So there there's going to be a dynamic uh portal already set up for you, right? Then okay. you will be able to work on that anyway. There'll be theory parts, which I'm going to do, right? 
Then what I do within the theory part, I will ask you to go and implement it within the within the session, right? Go with that, play with it and everything so that eventually it's not like you just see it on the screen. You will be given a portal that you can be able to kind of familiarize yourself, create what you need to create and everything. So that will be done. But unlike what we normally do in the internship, you are not going to be put in a group, right? Uh, that, okay, this is the BA group, that's the project. It's going to be individual people making coming together. But however, for everyone within this particular set, we put them in one group, right? So of course, if you guys want to meet and then deliberate, that also is, is fine anyway. But you will, you will have exposure to the tool, right? Then you can do whatever you want to, to do with it, yeah. Okay, does it involve any coding? No, no, it doesn't involve any coding. <laughs> okay. So is that, no, no, if you involve coding. <laughs> Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Even even for functional consultant, which I'm not as I've said is out of scope, right? Mm -hmm. They don't code that as well. They just kind of drag and everything, drag and drop, and that's what they do. And dynamics, they call it low code actually, right? Low code, no code development, which means that they don't do coding, right? You can survive in dynamic world as a functional consultant without having to do any coding, right? Because then Microsoft have done all the coding for you and they just provide you with a suite that you can configure for you to be able to do your work. And having said that, another thing I want to say, this is very, very important for, for the keyways. It's not that easy to test dynamic with automation, right? There are lots of, um, what's it called? IDs that are dynamically curated, it takes, you need to have kind of a bit of experience or, so of course, I'll be talking about the pitfalls, what you need to do, just how, th that's the reason that you're here anyway. So it's not, it's not that easy to automate. It's not easy to, to also test as well anyway. So, but of course, at the end of this program, you'll be able to see, but it's quite easy if you have someone holding your hands to go through that anyway, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, KG, uh, you still have your hands up. I'm not sure that you, you still have any question. KG. Okay. Thank you. No, uh, thank you. All right, cool. So, okay. I think that is us then. So we'll meet next week, actually, where we are going to be talking about. So I think I've got this slide for the next week. So, and done. so we are going to talk about what is lead how to create a lead and we're going to talk about uh, the call like opportunities how to create opportunity how to qualify a lead on and on like that you're going to so we'll also break and do like a workshop and i'll show you even though i've got everything written out what you need to do but we will then go into that and we'll be able to create this entity by ourselves so that's what we're going to do next week anyway so yeah Hopefully, I will see you guys next week. So, and if you are interested in registering, so I'm only looking for a few guys anyway. I think I've got almost like uh, 10 people on uh, assets. Yeah, right now. Anyway, so if you, yeah, if you are interested, so just go to this particular link and yeah, and then kind of enroll. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next week.